This episode of Sessler Something is brought to you by Full Sail. All right. There was that moment, a, a caesura, for those of you who love your fancy English words, that is usually taught as a pregnant pause. A caesura for Microsoft, where things are very, very quiet, and then all of a sudden, there's all this talk. Uh, it looks like that Microsoft was kind of compelled to have to say something due to a report that my uh, talented colleagues over at Game Informer were able to dig up, that uh, there is a very, very new and quite distinct policy shift from the Xbox 360 to the Xbox One with respect to uh, indie devs and self-publishing. They will allow for self-publishing. They will allow for uh, setting your own price. More interestingly, you can actually uh, develop right on the Xbox One. As they like to put it, it is its own dev kit. And uh, after there was some kind of concern about how much of the memory allotment would be afforded to someone who wanted to take advantage of that, it looks like it's just as much as any AAA developer would like to get their hands on uh, in terms of the horsepower that's in the Xbox One. Um, this is an interesting turn of events. Um, a lot of people, myself included, thought that this was a reversal of a policy. It is definitely a change from what's happening on the Xbox 360, but I was under the impression, and this plays into my whole sense, that we're drawing our own narratives about what's happening in this console war, and I, I fell victim to this as well. I could not find statements from a Microsoft representative with regard to the Xbox One that uh, stated that the current and existing Xbox 360 policies would be in place. Uh, what I did find that seemed to be the closest to it were some comments from Phil Spencer at the reveal in uh, Redmond b back in late May that uh, was, it was just kind of an evasive answer that they were interested in wanting to do things with indies and that they would probably have like more to say and stuff like that. Uh, so and you know what, it, it is, it, it, this is something that for reasons I don't understand was kept under wraps for way too long. Uh, Sony obviously, you know, back in February started this sort of new campaign of embracing the indies and they've looked a lot more friendly. And there is a historical precedent of them being more friendly to indie developers, bringing them on, trying to bring down those barriers for entry and giving them an opportunity to get their games available to a much larger public. Uh, well, Microsoft seems to be doing the same thing. Uh, I'm not a fan of saying that they're trying to just, you know, keep pace with what Sony is doing. I think this policy must have been something that has been worked on for a while. That's not something you can just flip a switch on. Uh, as I said before, they really should have said this earlier. But what is the long-term means of this? For both Sony and Microsoft, I don't see them making a lot of money on these programs and on these policies, especially when you start to put in the self-pricing, because that allows someone to sell something for 99 cents. There's not a huge cut that you get when something is being sold for 99 cents. Um, what I do like is it's good PR. It shows that there is something happening out there in the independent game community, in that, in that development community, and they're trying to give a platform where things can be made available and we can watch experiments take place. Experiments that are good, experiments that are bad. That is so healthy to get out there into the ecosystem and to just kind of get that learning. I think the long-term advantages for both systems is that they can start to eyeball some real talent. And maybe, you know, if it's on Xbox Live or if it's on PSN, they start to nurture it. Maybe bring them further in-house. And then we see, you know, that team of two that was working on something in their garage 10 years from now is working on something with a lot more funding and uh, is going to take that sophisticated game system and do something else with it. Here is where my concern is. Um, and this might be more true for what's happening on Microsoft's side than Sony, uh, although I think the risk is there in both cases. Curation. Anybody who's gone to the Apple App Store knows it is filled with bullshit. Um, like if you want that one product, there are 25 clones of it that are standing between you and it. Uh, things that seem to get favored, that get that prominent placement, seem to be absolutely at odds with what is good, what is interesting, and what is kind of vital that's out there in the ecosystem. I, I really hope because we're dealing with proper game, you know, console makers, you know, Microsoft and Sony, that something will be done to help highlight the interesting accomplishments that are out there. And you know, stuff that is broken, stuff that doesn't work, will naturally just start to fall to the bottom. Um, I think that is something of a pipe dream, but the th thing is, how can you get excited if you don't know where it is? All right, we're gonna take a second and acknowledge our sponsor, Full Sail University. Now, you obviously, if you're here, uh, you love playing video games, but have you ever thought of creating them? Whether you're interested in programming, art and animation, story creation, or even producing games, there's a game degree program at Full Sail University to fit your needs. Full Sail grads have worked on titles such as Red Dead Redemption, the Call of Duty series, and more. 
If you're looking for an online program, Full Sail's Game Art and Game Design Bachelor's Degree programs utilize Full Sail's immersive education platform, giving you the ability to earn your degree from anywhere in the world. Visit fullsail.edu slash something to learn more. Okay, so just so you know, I'm taping this on a Friday, and uh, hey, you know what? I haven't been seeing many questions in the comment section below. I think it's because I've forgotten to ask you guys to put questions there. So here it is. Put more questions there. Uh, for now, I'm going to respond to something else that just popped up. I am talking to you on a Friday. I know you're probably watching this on a Monday. Uh, okay, so there's this report that comes out of the Digital Foundry group inside of Eurogamer about... Uh, the memory allocation in the PS4. Everyone was so taken aback by the eight gigs of DDR5, and it looks like that three and a half of those gigs are gonna be reserved for the operating system. Uh, that is a lot of memory to hand over to the operating system. Sony, as of my taping of this, has not confirmed it, uh, so this is all a matter of speculation. I will hand it that this same team has done reporting on what was gonna be under the hood of the PS4 earlier, and they pretty much you know, were spot on. Uh, they, they were off on a couple of things, but it, there, there is reason to believe this. Um, people are freaking out. Oh no, I thought I was getting this eight gigs of DDR5, but now we're only gonna be getting this four and a half. There's panic. Um, don't panic. Uh, as, as one colleague of mine over at Polygon said, I think a lot of people have never gone through one of these console launches before. Um, these numbers, these specifics, they really don't signify much until we see what happens in the hands of the developers. I would have to say in the course of this story being put out, you didn't see any comments from people who are working on the PlayStation 4 who are saying that they are. this is somehow causing a huge problem. Yes, it sounds strange when you look at it on paper, but the thing is a console isn't on paper. And really the definition of what can be done with the technology that's under the hood is gonna be demonstrated as we see the games. Um, I can't say I've been terribly enthused with either uh, um, Infamous or Killzone in terms of game design, but in terms of something looking technically very uh, remarkable, I, 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 I think they're getting there. And so I think everyone needs to take a, a, a deep breath. This is all part of what I keep on addressing, that we, we look at these things as, as, as so suspiciously, as if there's some kind of bait and switch that's about to happen. These are very large, expensive launches of technology, and there is thought that goes into it. Sometimes that thought is really, really bad, but no one probably said, hey, let's just take three and a half gigs of this memory and put that over to the operating system for shits and giggles. I don't see that happening. Hopefully we'll hear something more clear from Sony going on in the future, but for now, stop looking for the demons that are sitting in the corner, because many times it's just a clown. <laughs>